Welcome to another version of Field Phone Ops, and today we're going to talk about something a little different. We're going to talk about a TM184 terminal strip and a TA125 terminal box. These were used by the signal crew in the field to go ahead and terminate and connect field phones and cables together. So sit back and uh, enjoy. A 184 terminal strip. These were developed in uh, actually 1938. Brett, doing your it allowed them to bring uh, two pieces of field wire into one side and then come out the other side. So you could use them to break a, uh, say, a multi-pair cable out into individual pairs of cable field wire. Uh, insert a test point somewhere where you could test the different wires going in different directions. Just basically help to organize how they laid their field wire out better. These have actually been in use from the uh, World War II all the way up into the 1990s. I found references to them in uh, manuals, field manuals. Um, they changed very little. Uh, the original ones that they came out with were basically this right here. They had a, a screw binding post on them. These are push button ones. The actual screw binding post you put a piece of field wire into and you screwed the thing down and it had a point in it that drove through the insulation of the wire and made contact. Well they stopped using those toward the end of World War II because the field wire went from being really thick to being thin like this uh, WD-1 I have right here. And when you'd stick it in the hole and down tight, it was sometimes it would be offset and you'd miss piercing the insulation. So they came up with this. I'll go ahead and hook a piece up here right now. You just go ahead and put one piece in the one one side, one wire in the other. The bar connected them. Then they originally were designed to be used. They used a bracket originally to hang on a tree or whatever you mounted this bracket. Then you hung the. Uh, TM-184 on it. This was a change they made during World War II where they just put these mounting holes in it. These holes allowed you to mount it via screws or nails or field wire. Uh, you could mount it to a tree, a post, whatever you wanted to use it for. Or mount it from you could do. I've got some pictures I'll show you on of, of, of how uh, they had it mounted. Also it's interesting, the original ones they came out with during World War, right before World War II and during the war, had an actual canvas case that fit over them. So this would fit inside a canvas case with a zipper on the front. You'd make, you'd make all your wire connections, it'd be hanging on a tree or whatever. You'd make all your wire connections and you'd zip this piece closed and it would protect it. Well those uh, have long been gone. Also I can't find any more reference to using those anymore. The latest manual I had that references using them in the 1960s talked about using a scrap of canvas or wood or something like that to some, put some kind of weather roof or shelf over it to protect it from the weather. Also, you'll see in the picture that I'm going to post with it that there's actually a, they actually have a wooden shelf built over the top of it. But basically, was it you put one wire on each side? This could do seven field wires. Has little clamps on the bottom. The idea was you could bring a, a cable into this, tighten it up the clamp, and better hold everything in place when you're working with it. Um, this one right here I have was actually made in 1967, so it's probably one of the newer ones they have. Um, I've never worked with these before, but uh, they're pretty handy, and uh, like I said, they're still being shown in the field manuals from the uh, 1990s. So this is a TM184 terminal strip. Thanks for watching. And here we go. Here's an example I talked about earlier about the uh, TM-184 and its uh, canvas cover. Here's a, a picture from the original TO of the canvas cover. You can see I have one open, one closed, and basically it, the, the terminal strip fit inside the canvas cover. You went and Pulled the zipper down and noticed there was a drawstring at the bottom that you could tie up to help tighten it up. And then the picture on the right, basically this is this is what it looked like when you had it tied up like that. And here's a picture of uh, TM-184. is actually deployed. This picture was taken during World War II. Looks like he has, uh, looks like six of them there. But it gives you an idea how they've got it fastened to a tree and they're using it to all their routing and uh Terminating their cables and such, you can see they got a tag on each of the cables so they can mark and keep track of which one's which. And also notice they have a little like shelf or cover built on top of it to protect it from the rain. Uh, I don't know whether this was a soldier or marine, but uh, they did a lot of wiring. Okay, this is a TM125 slash GT terminal box. 
And this is different from the uh, terminal strip. It's actually an aluminum box right here. You can see it, aluminum case. It has D-rings on it, which allowed you to hang it from a tree or a post or whatever using nails, screws, field wire, cord or whatever. It has a latch on it. It's, it's fairly weather tight. It's not really super, you couldn't dunk it in water, but it will keep rain out. And when you open it up, it looks like this. And basically what you have is you have a row of binding post on each side. There's 12. Enough for 12 pieces of field wire come in one side and 12 pieces of field wire coming in the other. And in the center you have these little twist switches right here. Right now with the switch set like that, it's connected so that this binding post is connected to this binding post. But if you take the screwdriver, you go inside there, and I just open it up. What does this allow for? This allows you to go in there and do testing from this. That's what this second row of holes for is right here. They actually had a test kit that came with this. I wish I had one. It's called an MX842. And it had different tools in there and probes that you would stick inside there and patch cords. And it basically allowed you to do troubleshooting and monitoring and testing on circuits. The reason they came up with this and the reason it has 12 is because... Uh, they would use it in conjunction with a SB22 switchboard. So you'd hook, set your switchboard up in your tent, then somewhere, tent or shelter or wherever you're going to put it, then somewhere that's not in the way, you'd hang this up and your switchboard would come in on this side and your wires would come out on this side. And basically what it allowed you to do was it allowed you to go in there and troubleshoot and check circuits and that without having to, to, to bug the switchboard operator or tear the switchboard or anything about it. It came an easy way to get in there and check and troubleshoot and test circuits. Like I said, they actually had little patch cords made that would plug in. They had double plugs. So you could plug in, say, for this two pieces of field wire right here. You can actually reroute them to these two pieces of field wire if you ever wanted to. Pretty interesting. There's a handy little box. I've used these. We used to use these to break out uh, multi-pair cables into individual cables for phone lines and that. Down here in the bottom was actually a, a chart. I don't know how you can see this. So you can annotate using a pencil or grease pencil of what phone numbers or circuit data and stuff. The, uh, the, the binding posts themselves are pretty simple. I'll show you. We'll hook a wire up here quick. They're actually push buttons. So you actually will go ahead and we'll hook this uh, hook this bottom one up. So you push the, the binding post down, insert the wire. Push the binding post down, insert the wire. Maybe. Okay, there we go. Then you take... And there's a little notch there. I don't know if you can see it. There's a notch there with a rubber piece in it. Well, you go ahead and fit your wire into that. We'll do the other one on the other side. Make it look sort of like we're doing an uh, actual connection here. Push the button in there. Push the field wire in there. Push it down. There we go. We pull it around this side. And we once again go through this little notch right here. with a piece of rubber inside here. And we go ahead and seal it up. And basically, there we go. We have a basically a weatherproof connection for field wire. And that's what this is used for. I had several of these. We used them a lot. Um, mainly to use break up. We used a lot of uh, Cat5 cable to run phone circuits on. And this is what we'd use it for. You could bring a piece of Cat5 five, five cable, which has four pairs of wire in it in on this side and connect it up right here then pull out individual phone drops on the other side or vice versa and uh, like I said by turning the little little screw switches here you could close or open a wire path that allow you to test it and this is a TM 125 slash GT thanks for watching And here's the example of the MX842 uh, maintenance kit or checking kit that came with it. You can see these are the objects or the components it had. It had uh, four of the patching cords so you can move circuits around. The uh, small little square rectangular things are actually uh, little signal or ring detectors. You could plug into those little holes and it would actually detect if you had a ring signal coming in. So you could check ringing on circuits. And the two black things are actually individual little probes that were spring-loaded so you could put the probe in the hole and then it was spring-loaded so you, the jaws were so you could put a piece of field wire into it and you could go ahead and test circuits. I've, uh, 
I've seen several of these cases online. I just can't seem to find one that's got the items in it. 